There's a type of game that most indie developers will avoid, and rightfully so, but to understand why they do this, and if they should, we need a better understanding of game development. More specifically, just how impossible the task laid out for indie developers is. Most of the greatest achievements in human history have been accomplished by a group of experts with a diverse range of skills, and while video games certainly aren't on the same magnitude as something like the moon landing, they are similar in that you need a team of people all extremely skilled at their individual crafts to make it all come together. This sounds easy in theory, but when you take a closer look at it, you start to realize just how difficult it is. First, you'll need a programmer, and they're gonna have to be pretty good at what they do. While most software aims to avoid bugs, games especially have to be programmed near perfectly. A website or app can have bugs that cause them to crash, but you can just refresh them and move on. In a game, however, those same bugs can result in an otherwise excellent section getting ruined or hours of lost progress. But just having a game that runs properly is nowhere near enough. You need a game that plays well too, and for that you need another expert, a game designer. Now fortunately, a large part of game design is actually knowing how to program, so it's very likely that your expert can do both. Unfortunately, that's not all it takes to make a game. You need someone for the music and the art style as well. And remember, if any one of these parts isn't near flawless, your game will likely fail. You see, as you look deeper into this, it becomes increasingly clear why most indies choose certain genres. Things Things like roguelites, platformers, and metroidvanias. But even these games are far from easy to make, and that's kind of the point. If just the sheer task of creating a game is so monumentally difficult, and you're an indie studio who's already at a disadvantage due to a lack of resources, it makes sense to aim for what's practical. But just to be clear, this isn't a bad thing at all. Just because an indie chooses a common genre doesn't mean that developer is lazy or that they can't show off their own unique ideas. Personally, my favorite indie game of all time is actually a platformer, because of the unique ideas on display. However, it's not hard to see why this genre might seem Seem oversaturated. That said, there is a genre of indie games that I've seen very little of, and when you think about how tough it is to make any indie game, it makes sense that this genre would be so scarce. But when we do see this genre represented in the indie scene, they can produce some of the best games ever made. So let's talk about the elusive indie JRPG. Let's make this simple. Imagine everything you had to do to make an indie platformer. Now imagine doing that same thing seven times. This is part of why making an indie JRPG is so difficult. See, one of the defining characteristics of JRPGs is length. They're often well over 50 hours long, and some of them can even reach deep into the hundreds. If we assume an average of 70 hours for a JRPG and 10 for a platformer, then you're looking at 60 extra hours of game to develop. The sheer quantity of work needed to complete one of these games really can't be understated, especially when compared to the minimal effort required to subscribe to YouTube channels you enjoy. <laughs> But that's just one part of it. Another defining characteristic of the JRPG is a large cast of characters. They'll often have parties of at least four characters, all of which have their own personal backstories and development. Those characters require more art and of course, more animation, since you can't just copy paste your animations for each character. And those backstories require more writing, just like another defining aspect of JRPGs, their stories. It's not uncommon for cutscenes in a JRPG to last well over 10 minutes, and that's a lot of writing. This isn't even mentioning how complicated some of the systems in JRPGs can be. I mean, you've got combat systems like Xenoblade and Tails which require college level courses to fully understand. Not to mention the dozens of different enemies, status effects, weapons, armor sets, accessories, dungeons, I mean the list just doesn't end. Even if the difficulty doesn't go up in creating a JRPG, the time increases dramatically and I believe this is the key reason why we don't see more indie JRPGs. Imagine you task three different teams to make indie games over the span of a decade. If each team was asked to make one type of game, platformers, roguelites, or JRPGs, the team tasked with making JRPGs might spend the entire decade making that game depending on their resources. Now I really do want to stress that making any type of game is an overwhelmingly challenging task that I myself could never complete. But the key here is that the risk involved in developing a game for the better half of a decade may just be too high for most developers. But I did say most developers, not all. See, some devs take that challenge and go for it regardless of the risk, and when it works out, you get games like this. 
Indie JRPGs bring something special to the table that AAA JRPGs often fall flat on. They're special for the same reason other indie games are special. They're made with pure passion and aren't burdened by a large corporation breathing down their backs. This gives them a few unique advantages. In the case of Chained Echoes, you've got a game that was inspired by the golden age of turn-based JRPGs. It perfectly captures what made those games special while improving their shortcomings. Crosscode is a slightly different case. While this game was certainly inspired by the golden age, it breaks away entirely from a lot of those conventions. The setting is totally different from the traditional castles and airships that are common in this genre. Not only is the setting different, but the combat and even core gameplay loop are as well. I often struggle to describe Crosscode because it really is an amalgamation of a ton of different ideas. Finally, you've got a much lesser known indie JRPG than the previous two that basically no one played. There's nothing I can say about this game that hasn't already been said, but I thought I'd at least mention it if I'm talking about indie JRPGs. Now you wouldn't be crazy to assume that because of the risks outlined at the start of this video, we won't be seeing any great indie JRPGs anytime soon. But you'd actually be wrong. Indies right now are bigger than they've ever been before, and if you've been paying attention, you'll realize why that's so important. If indies are bigger now than they've ever been, then the risk of developing bigger games goes down, relatively speaking. Not only this, but we're seeing more and more indie studios get large enough to be more than willing to take the risk, like Sabotage with their upcoming Sea of Stars. So while we may not be in a world filled with indie JRPGs right now, much like the journey of a developer that just started their own game, we only get closer to that goal with each passing day.